Hey, this is section 5.3 and this is on inverse inverse z-scores. So this first problem says find the z-score that corresponds to a cumulative area of 0 0.9803. So in other words, it's giving you a probability. You have to get the z-score. So to do these, go to the Excel sheet and again under the T and z-score sheet. If we look over to the left a little bit, again here we were at the top where we could just put in z-scores. This is the top where we could just put in z-scores. Then here's where we could put in x, mu, and sigma to get z-scores. And here is inverse z-scores. Now this particular one is telling you no uh, mean or standard deviation. But it's giving you a z probability of 0.9. It's giving you a probability of 0.9803. So our mean for z-scores if we remember back to section 5.1, was 0 and the standard deviation is 1. Now cumulative probability means the area to the left. Okay, So in here we would put our probability which was 0 0.9803 and this would give us our z-score and our x value but here's what we really wanted to know on this problem which was the z-score which is 2.059 or rounded to the nearest hundredth 2.06. Now, more realistic problems are like these two here, example 9 and example 10. Example 9 says an instruction manual claims that the assembly time for a product is normally distributed with a mean, so the mu is 4.2 hours and a standard deviation of 0.3 hours. So the sigma is 0.3 and they both are in hours, so we're in good shape there. It says determine the interval in which 95% of the assembly times fall. So we want the Z scores or the X scores in other words that are to the left and the right that 95 percent of your uh, data is between these two so um, let's go to the Excel sheet here and we are on the inverse Z score area of the Z and T score sheet as soon as it gets to that let's see if we can get there one more time here okay let's see if we can get there taking a while to get here here we go okay so what we'll do is is in this inverse z-score area we'll put in our mean which is 4.2 our sigma which is 0.3 and then what we are looking for is an interval it's between two values and the probability that it's between these two values is 0.95 or 95 percent here's the z-scores but here are my x scores. So in any way, uh, in, in anyway, with this problem, this the amount of time that you would need to work to uh, be within that 95% interval is from 3.6 hours to 4.787 hours, and that would be the answer to problem number nine. Problem number 10 says monthly utility bills are normally distributed with a mean of 100. So the mu is 100 with a standard deviation of 12. So sigma is 12. It says what is the smallest utility bill that can be in the top 10% of bills? So we want to be in the top 10%. So only 10% of bills are higher than that. So we would go to the Excel sheet and we would put in our mean. So let me move over here and I'll put in our mean which is 100, our standard deviation which was 12, and we want the area to the right since we're in the top 10% to be 0.10, probably the right to be 0.10. And we get this for the z-score, but in other words our utility bill would have to be at least this much, $115 and about 38 cents rounded to the nearest penny. And that's about all there is on inverse z-scores, which is a difficult concept, but you would just use that particular section of the Excel sheet.